Holmes, for heaven's sake, whatever's going on? Oh, hello, Watson. You're early. Did you kill all of your patients? What? Holmes, where have all these wretched bees come from? I increased the temperature of the room so as to prevent them from hibernating. I needed to take a sample of honey. But it worked, Watson. We will have honey all year round. Ridiculous and dangerous. They're domestic bees. Apis mellifera. Such industrious workers. Anyway, Watson, I am sorry, but I must leave you. I'm in rather a hurry. You have a new case? Yes, but nothing as thrilling as this experiment. A theft of plants at the Royal Botanic Gardens in Kew. I'm helping a minister who's an old friend of mine. You can join me if you like. Well, I'll admit that I'd far rather accompany you than remain alone here with these workers of yours. Besides, you'll need a helping hand with the flowers you're intending to bring back. Watson, however did you guess? For the great Sherlock Holmes to bother with the theft of plants. Come on, admit that you're planning to spoil your little bees with some rare pollens. <laughs> Since when did I become so transparent? Let us go. Well, Holmes, here we are at the Royal Botanic Gardens. There's no doubt that this place is beautiful. But are you really intent on investigating the theft of the plants? Yes, of course. Don't touch anything else, is that clear? Just go and get a bucket of fertilizer. And without turning it over this time. Good day to you, gentlemen. How may I help you? If you are here for a visit, please do come back on Sunday. I am afraid that it cannot wait. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. We are investigating the theft of plants that took place here five days ago. A remarkable collection, I believe. So you're the one in charge, eh? A small favor for a friend. Now to whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? I am Martin Hamish. I am the deputy director of Kew Gardens. And that fellow yonder is Albert. He works here. I am delighted to meet you. What can you tell us about the plants? They were rare and exceptional plants. We presented them at our last exhibition. We haven't removed the stand yet. It is still in the large glass house. We only learned of their disappearance the evening after the exhibition, and nobody saw anything. No doors were forced? No, but I would imagine that for a thief it would be fairly easy to gain entry, for there are no guards here. Well, if you don't mind, we will take a look. Now, you say that it is in the large glass house. Yes, the one just behind me. Just a second, since Albert has nothing else to do. Albert, show these gentlemen where the exhibition was held. How many people work here? Only myself, but occasionally two students, Albert, whom you have met, and Miss White. Here it is. This is the place where the stolen plants were exhibited. Thank you. Is there something the matter? Yes, there is. All right, the plants were valuable and rare, but it seems to me that the tragedy that took place here only two days ago has been entirely forgotten already. What tragedy are you referring to? My... the director of Kew Gardens, Mr. Montague Dunn. He died here just two days ago. We're very sorry. We were not aware. The two of you were good friends? He... He was my father. Oh dear, our condolences. We should not be troubling you. Please do excuse us for the intrusion. You say that he died here, in the large glass house? Holmes? Yes, just here, near the door to the colonial collection. He suffered a heart attack, just like that, so suddenly. It was terrible. Excuse me, gentlemen, but I cannot remain here. If you need me, I'll be in the reserve. That's the room next to the front of the large greenhouse. Of course, we understand. According to Albert, this is where his father, Montague Dunn, was found dead. Blood. 
This sign is broken. Something heavy was dropped upon it. Someone fell violently against this sign, and they were injured in the clash, most likely a head wound. Fragments of a flower pot. It fell down here. Soil. It should have come from a flower pot. The soil on the side of this flower shelf is the same as that on the ground. The traces are thinner in some places. These boot marks are fresh. It appears as though someone was dragging their feet. The footprints reveal that someone staggered here. The door was smashed at shoulder height. This door handle is new. It was recently changed. This pot was broken fairly recently. A flower pot recently fell down from these shelves and was misplaced. The esconson was breached near the handle. The door was forced from the inside of the colonial collection room. The handle was changed afterwards. I think we need to inspect the colonial collection room. All the clues around here are quite suspicious. I need my imagination to make sense of it all. This reconstruction reveals a disturbing fact. Montague Dunn damaged the door of the colonial collection room. He was in a panic, or the door was locked. Was it an accident, or a murder then, I wonder? I think we need to inspect the colonial collection room. Very strange. Half of the colonial collection is absent. These windows were perfectly cleaned. This broken fragment was the result of a heavy blow. A fragment of marble, most likely chipped from a statue or sculpture, The smell is strong. It is a detergent. Part of this greenhouse was emptied and thoroughly cleaned. This is one of the outlets of the ventilation system. According to this, they have light and moisture control in some parts of the building. These plants come from all the territories of the British Empire.
I asked Inspector Lestrade to take Montague Dunn's body to Scotland Yard. It's ready for autopsy then. First of all, let us carry out an external examination. There are no suspicious marks upon the chest. Let us finish our external examination so that we can proceed with the autopsy. Nothing suspicious here. No redness, stings or bruises. There is an injury to the skull, most probably caused by the fall in the water lily greenhouse. The vessels and the pupil of the eye appear quite normal. The air from the lungs carries a faint floral aroma. Hmm. Now, let us examine the internal organs. The lungs are congested and edematous. The tissue on the inferior lobe of the right lung is damaged, most probably caused by toxins from an unknown plant. The heart's blood vessels show no pathological signs. The heart tissue shows no visible pathological signs. The liver is enlarged. It would seem that he was suffering from an alcohol addiction. The liver tissue is brown. There are no visible pathological signs. The stomach tissues show no visible pathological signs. There is a small amount of content. It appears that he breakfasted lightly, only a short while before his death. My suspicions have been substantiated. Montague Dunn, the director of Kew Gardens, died from poisoning, plant poisoning to be more exact. You mean... Yes, it is murder. We should inform Lestrade. Yes, but do remember, Watson, that I discovered the murder. The challenge is mine. The challenge, Holmes? We need to locate that deadly plant. Such a perfect murder appeals to me. Murder of any kind appeals to you. Is that all we need to do? No. We also have the people working at Kew Gardens. Martin Hamish, and the son of the victim, Albert Dunn. And also Miss White, of whom we spoke with Mr. Hamish. Should we bring them all here for interrogation? No. A few innocuous questions at Kew will suffice, as well as a discreet delve into their personal affairs. Yes, Watson. It is time now to open the doors. Even those in the staff building? I suppose that is necessary. We should also be concerned with the victim himself. After all, we don't know very much about Montague Dunn. You're enjoying this already, aren't you? <laughs> More than a little.
Mr. Hamish, can you explain to us what happened to the colonial collection? It seems somewhat depleted. But, uh, oh, most likely maintenance work, tidying up. You're not sure, then? But you're the deputy director. Well, I am busy. I cannot be everywhere at once. Albert told us about the tragic death of Mr. Dunn, the late director of Kew Gardens. Tragic indeed. His heart attack was quite unexpected. As deputy director, how was your relationship with Montague Dunn? To be honest with you, Mr. Holmes, it could have been better. You see, every Tuesday he would carry out his inspection of the gardens, but it was solely to make an impression, great pretense that he cared at all. He would give out absurd orders, ignoring anyone else's opinion. He would then disappear for the rest of the week. He was what some might call a man of action. I'd say rather he was overzealous and chaotic. So after all, it was no wonder, perhaps, that he ended up like that, if you take into consideration his kind of lifestyle. You mentioned that Mr. Dunn led a particular lifestyle. Well, it's no secret that he enjoyed, uh, celebrating, shall we say? He was a member of the London Smart Set. He was famous for it. That and... And? He had an eye for the ladies, to put it mildly, Mr. Holmes. Now tell me, Mr. Hamish, do you grow the more deadly variety of plant here? You mean insectivorous? Yes, but nothing larger than that. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Can I help you, gentlemen? Do you work here? Yes, but part-time only. I'm also studying botany at the University of London. You're following in your father's footsteps, then that is commendable. Well, even if botany is not my strongest suit, there are people who say that I could be a good manager. Who is Miss Margaret White? Ah, she is the young lady who studies with me. She visits here sometimes to help out with the greenhouses. In fact, she should be here today. She wanted to work at the seed house. That's the small greenhouse across from the large glass house. We noticed that a part of the colonial collection has been cleared. Ah. At the moment I'm just dealing with the storage room. I don't know much about the other rooms. I imagine that your relationship with your father may have been a strained one. Yes. I cannot say that he was a kind man. He never listened to me at all. He forced me to work here. But now, after his death, I've been pondering it over. Perhaps he wasn't so wrong about me after all. I have to follow his path, and I have to manage Kew Gardens. And I can do it. I can be as good as any other who works here. Would you please tell us about Martin Hamish, the deputy director? Well, I have to tell you that Mr. Hamish is not and has never been the deputy director of Kew Gardens. My father would not have tolerated it. Indeed. Well, that is most interesting. He told us that he was. Yes, because he believes that the management should be passed down to him now that my father is dead. But in actual fact, Mr. Hamish only has the honor of being the garden's longest serving employee. In fact, if we are to think logically at all, it should be me who takes over the management of Kew Gardens. Do you not have a good relationship with Mr. Hamish? I suppose so. But we have very little in common. Mr. Hamish loves his plants and Kew Gardens and I cannot say that I share his passion. I see. And how was his relationship with your father? Oh, he hated my father. It was obvious. He would be furious whenever my father boasted of Kew Gardens in the newspapers or at conferences. He was convinced that my father was stealing all of the credit for himself. 
But my father treated Mr. Hamish in the same way as he treated anyone. Dismissively. With indifference. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. Look, Holmes, this charming lady must be Miss White. She's entering the seed house. Open. Good day to you, Miss. You have some very beautiful plants here. Oh, why, thank you, sir. And good day to you, too. But... Oh, I, I do beg your pardon. My name is Dr. John Watson. This is my good friend, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. I am honored to make your acquaintance, gentlemen. My name is Margaret White. Excuse me, but are you Sherlock Holmes, the great detective? Yes, I am he. What a pleasure to see you here at Kew Gardens. Are you working on a case? Yes, a theft of plants that took place here a few days ago after their most recent exhibition. Oh, oh yes, of course. I quite forgot about that. Oh, it's quite understandable that you might forget about the theft of the plants, miss, after the tragedy that took place here. Yes, the director was a truly good man. It is such a terrible misfortune. Would you happen to know why part of the Colonial Collection was cleared? No, I have never been there. Do you work here? Part-time only. I am a biology student at the London University. I attend the same classes as the son of Mr. Montague Dunn. That is how I found my chance to work here for part of my thesis, you see. It is a great honor. How well did you know Mr. Montague Dunn? He was a master, a great leader. I saw him almost as a spiritual father. He had an exceptional nature? Oh yes, indeed. He was always so active and so optimistic and very nice to me. Although he could behave harshly towards his son. Why so? He loved his son dearly and wanted the very best for him. It made him extremely demanding. Albert, who is naturally shy, suffered because of it. Most of the doors in Kew Gardens are locked. Do you have a key to this room? Oh, yes. Albert gave me a set of duplicate keys. He agreed I might carry out my studies without disturbing him. It is only temporary. <laughs> <laughs> 